Located on the Susquehanna River in Northern Maryland, the Conowingo Dam has served as Maryland's largest source of clean energy for more than 90 years. A concrete dam with a powerhouse consisting of 11 generating units and 50 spillway gates, it spans 94 feet tall and 4,648 feet long. It powers 165,000 homes, prevents 880,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions, traps 600 tons of upstream debris, and provides 273 million in economic benefits throughout Maryland every year. In 2011, Crofton was asked by the facility owner to perform a feasibility study for replacing the aging trash rack and headgate rail systems. After a thorough risk assessment, with consideration to safety, financial, and feasibility, Crofton identified a 100-foot C-shaped cofferdam as the ideal method for dewatering the trash rack slots for rehabilitation. Other dewatering methods considered were a semicircular cofferdam, an interior bulkhead, and an upstream bulkhead. Another option was to perform the entire rehabilitation using divers, but the C-shaped cofferdam was found to improve overall safety and quality assurance. In 2012, Crofton Industries was asked to move forward with the design, build, and installation of the cofferdam and a modular stainless steel rail system. There were two key constraints to consider. First, the 100-foot cofferdam needed to fit within the 32-foot tall headroom restriction of the cranes. And second, the new trash rack guide system had to withstand the dewatered head pressure associated with placing head gates in the trash rack slots to dewater the head gate slots for future rehabilitation. Crofton's engineering team designed four 25-foot tall structures, each engineered to withstand the hydrostatic pressures associated with their location in the water column. The lowest 25-foot tall section would be exposed to the highest pressures and the uppermost to the lowest, so the internal strength members were reduced in quantity and size from lowest to highest. This reduced overall weight of the fully assembled cofferdam to about 70 tons, which was well within the capacity of the crane and by dividing the 100-foot tall structure into four 25-foot tall sections, each section was within the 32-foot tall height restriction of the cranes. The installation process required extensive planning. The cofferdam sections would have to be offloaded from trucks onto the headworks, rotated from horizontal to vertical position, and placed one at a time into the intake opening for placement in front of the trash rack guide. Sections would then be bolted together and assembled in place. Here, you can see one 25-foot section of the cofferdam being placed on the facility headworks by the gantry crane. Now, the cofferdam is hoisted into a vertical position before traveling to its installation destination. One section of the cofferdam structure is being bolted to the previously installed section by iron workers. Now, the cofferdam is slowly lowered into place by the gantry crane. A system of blocking beams was designed to hold multiple sections in place while another section is positioned and assembled. Once the entire 100-foot structure is hanging from the blocking beam assembly, the entire cofferdam is hoisted up, the blocking beam assembly is removed, and the cofferdam lowered into place in front of the trash rack guide slot. Then, it's positioned by a diver and set on the intake bay floor centered over the trash rack guide slot. Once the cofferdam is placed, it's anchored to the concrete intake wall by divers, pumped dry and sealed in preparation for the installation of interior lighting, ventilation, and access platform. The entire prototype installation was completed within a single scheduled outage for the unit. And the final test, the installation of a trash rack in an intake bay with one guide rail rehabilitated, was successful.
In 2017, the project was resumed having undergone an extensive lessons learned process since 2012. And subsequently, two out of four guide rails, or one half of a unit, was rehabilitated within a single outage, doubling the rate of productivity. In 2018, increased efficiencies doubled productivity again, and a full unit of four guides was rehabilitated within a single outage. And finally, in 2019, an additional four guides were completed, also within a single outage. Between the prototype in 2012 and the first full unit rehabilitation in 2018, a 17.1% reduction in cost was achieved. And rehabilitations from 2018 to 2019, which were more similar in scope, made for an additional 4% reduction in project budget. While Croft and Industries service at Conowingo Dam began in 2005, performing spillway improvements using a floating bulkhead, our team has been a resource to hydropower generation and distribution professionals for over 70 years. With decades of experience in underwater inspection and assessment, repair, and decommissioning in water resource facilities, we take great pride in maintaining our nation's infrastructure with the highest levels of safety, service, integrity, and innovation.